Hey guys, James with TFB TV. Sit back and relax because it's story time. I got a phone call from CAA a couple of months ago from somebody I'm buddies with over there. And he said, hey, look, man, just want to let you know that this marketing company that you're not affiliated with at all uh, called us and said that you would do a review of our CAA MCK for $3,000. As far as I know, you guys don't charge for reviews. So I thought that was strange. I wanted to give you a heads up. So looked into it and turns out that there was somebody telling these guys at CAA that, that TFB TV would review the MCK for $3,000. So it pissed me off so much that I just said, you know what? Um, send me the damn gun. You guys know how it works around here. If we have a sponsor and we're reviewing one of their products, we tell you because it's honest. And the whole thing is just effed because I mean, 70, 80% of the gun reviews on YouTube are probably just paid bullshit. Like this is the most scammy industry I've learned uh, since I've been working in this industry for like over 15 years now. Uh, super scammy, super scammy. And uh, you have shit like this all the time where it's like, hey, pay $3,000 for like a positive review. So I said, send me the stupid MCK and I will do an honest unpaid review. So that's what you're going to get today, a review of the CAA MCK. I'm going to call it the 1.0. They have a 2.0 already, and I'm going to talk about that briefly because the 2.0 kind of fixes some issues that I had with the 1.0. So what is the MCK? The MCK, it's the micro chassis kit. I believe that's what it stands for. It's a chassis for a pistol that you already have. So it's not a firearm in and of itself, it's a chassis that you actually load your sidearm into. And it is micro. This is about as small as it gets without going to just a straight brace system. But you get a lot more features out of this gun than you do with just the brace, such as Picatinny rail along the sides of the gun, a Picatinny rail for sights and optics along the top. You get the additional magazine holder, you get the angled foregrip the folding stock. So you get all these features in a package that isn't all that expensive. They make it, of course, at least at the time of filming, and I'm talking about the 1.0. They make it in the Glock version that works with, I believe, Gen 3, Gen 4, and Gen 5 Glocks. If you have a learning disability, they make it in SIG P320 flavor. And if you're poor, they have it for the Smith & Wesson M&P series of pistols. So you take your favorite sidearm, you lock it into place, and it turns your pistol into basically a much more effective pistol caliber carbine slash SMG. You can just take a, a gun that you already have, order the MCK kit, have it sent right to you. I would highly recommend that you check out our newest sponsor, Top Gun Supply. I don't know if they sell CAA products or not, but go check it out there anyways. And of course, you're going to be feeding this thing with Ventura munitions ammo while you're wearing your blue Alpha Gear belt. The MCK is inexpensive. It folds up into a very small package, has a clever little hook here you can see for your buttstock. A transportable, virtually concealable PCC slash SMG that you can make with a sidearm that you already own, that you've already done your 4473 on. It requires nothing but a credit card or a check if you're gangster and you roll that way. Let's go into the specs. Then we're going to talk about what I liked and what I didn't like about the CAA MCK 1.0. CAA markets the MCK as the most cost-effective conversion kit quote-unquote in the world with quote-unquote the fastest assembly and disassembly conversion on the market. No pistol disassembly is required to use the MCK. You just place it into the kit, lock it up, and it's ready to roll. Many of the models allow for multiple handgun sizes in one platform. For example, my Gen 1 Glock 17 model would also accept a Glock 19. It's got a width of 2.48 inches, a height of 5.7 inches, a length of 13.7 inches, and it weighed about two and a half pounds, at least my MCK1 did, with the brace, the RDS, and the flashlight. And explaining the differences between the Gen 2 and the Gen 1, the Gen 2 features an extended stabilizer that allows the gun to be fired with 
the stabilizer folded, unlike the Gen 1. Although you can put this new stabilizer on the Gen 1. The Gen 2 rear door extends back an additional 15 degrees, making it easier to insert and extract the pistol. The Gen 2 MCK will accommodate pistols with higher suppressor height sights. The Gen 2 MCK also features a new charging handle that makes more surface contact with the rear of the handgun slide, which I think would be an important feature. The Gen 2 MCK features an aluminum top Picatinny rail, and the Gen 2 accepts a brass catcher. In my opinion, one of the most important features, the Gen 2 features an improved spare magazine holder that operates with a mag catch and a mag release button. Finally, one of the most important features is that the Gen 2 is suppressor ready and can accommodate a silencer up to 1.38 inches in diameter. MSRP in the Gen 2 is $299 and it's $249 for the Gen 1. Things I liked. The price. It's $150 street price. I think it's like $250 or $299 on their website. I'm not familiar with all the trim models. Like, I don't know if 150 bucks gets you something like without the brace or whatever. Um, but it, the important thing is I've seen this thing street price start at $150, which is pretty reasonable. Biggest thing they nailed, ergos on this gun, especially the AFG, this front grip area up here, this angled foregrip. Looks weird, right? Totally looks weird. Feels freaking great, especially with these thumb rests that you see. So there's Picatinny rail, small Picatinny rail slots here on the three o'clock and nine o'clock positions. And you've got a full length Picatinny rail across the top for mounting optics, sights, whatever. The combination of this thumb grip and this angled foregrip, just the way it felt for me, felt awesome. And it's got, as you can see, a spare magazine up here housed in the AFG. And we'll talk about that in a second because we're talking about stuff that I liked. Another good feature, you got a sling QD socket right under here. So that was actually pretty helpful if I wanted to use like a single point sling. I also like the charging handle. I think some people have complained about it. It's a little short, but it's out of the way. And it's obviously going to be a reciprocating charging handle because it's more or less attached to your Glock slide here. But I found after just getting three or four mags through it, it was very easy. It made reload smooth, but you could also use, of course, your slide release here on the left-hand side because there's a little hump here for your thumb. And the brace that came with it, very comfy. There are a few options. I think they make like a regular brace, a long brace, a short brace, and they even make a stock. So if you have an SBR Glock 17 and you wanna use an actual folding stock, you can use that instead of using an arm brace. I straight up like the performance. I thought this gun performed very well. I thought it was a good compromise between brace and PCC slash SMG. I had a Glock 17 crammed in mine, so you're talking about slightly longer than a four inch barrel and it worked very well. It was so much more effective, something that you can shoulder with your brace, not stock, versus just shooting a regular handgun combined with those excellent ergonomics. This thing shot really well. Like I was actually very, very impressed with the way this performed. Recoil is not there at all. You're using whatever trigger that you're already used to with your Glock 17. I had no malfunctions of any type. You can see there's an ample window here. And I've seen other chassis kits that don't have large enough injection windows which sometimes can lead to malfunctions, failures to eject. This thing was 100% reliable. Lockup was pretty good in here, so it's definitely sturdier than if you were, say, holding a pistol. Weight's good, it's not heavy at all, it handled well. I really have no complaints about the performance. You can see from some of these video clips here, like when I'm shooting my first couple of magazines, it's taken some getting used to, some used to the manual of arms, the ergos, but then towards the end, magazine changes are getting smoother, charging the guns getting smoother. So for their intended purpose, what they wanted this gun to do, I think it executed it. All right, let's get to the things I didn't like on the MCK 1.0, and I highlight that because some of these features have changed for the MCK 2.0. First, I don't like, as you can see here, this barrel shroud, it prevents me from attaching a suppressor. So if I've got my Glock 17, I've got a threaded barrel, and I've got a silencer for it, I'm out of luck. I can't attach a suppressor. They fixed that with the 2.0. The 1.0 has this 500 lumen flashlight in it. I'll show this to you. This is a 500 lumen 
flashlight. No momentary on off, just straight on off. And guys, guys, come on. Does that look like 500 lumens? Dubious, dubious at best. I would think that it would be a better idea to make this little tube underneath the barrel shroud compatible for a one inch flashlight body. Another feature that I didn't like that was fixed with the 2.0 is this magazine is held in place just by friction. This is your spare magazine up front. Very cool feature. Love the feature, hate that it's just friction holding it in place. Now it's really in there. It's in there really tightly, but the drawback to that is that whenever you rip this thing out, until you get good at it, especially, you're, you're finding, like you can see in some of these clips here, I'm like trying to rip a loaded magazine out of here, and by the time you, you exert enough force to get it out, you've totally ripped your sights and your barrel off target. Well, they fixed that with the 2.0 because now the 2.0 uses a magazine release button, which makes so much more sense. The optic rail is fantastic. It's sturdy, it runs. You can see almost the entire length of the chassis but the optic that came with it was the Primary Arms MD-RBG-2. Mm, I don't wanna say it was bad, but I don't wanna say it was great either. So you put it, it goes to 11, which is clever. This is Spinal Tap fans. It goes to 11. At 11, it doesn't quite wash out in bright light. Like I can, I can still see it. This doesn't look, feel, or perform like a super high quality optic. Now, bear in mind, it was it was passable. I will say that, it was passable. But if you want something a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more high tech, this also doesn't have a quick disconnect option. It just came with this MCK riser. It worked, right? It worked. Would I expect this to last like if you dropped it out of the second story window of your house or something? Probably not. There's a lot of plastic in this gun and that was another one of my main concerns. You have this plastic on metal lock up here, like with your slide to the charging handle in the gun. I mean, plastic on metal just doesn't seem like a good combination. Now it isn't, to be fair, it isn't moving, right? While the charging handle is indeed moving and the slide's moving, the, the plastic component is clamped onto the slide. There isn't any movement or any friction. So for all I know, this could last forever. I just get a little bit worried about plastic on metal contact, especially when you consider this is a critical operating component of the MCK. Plastic on plastic here, the lockup for locking the pistol into the chassis. You saw that, I just like accidentally ripped the thing out. Um, I wouldn't say that it's the most stable, but that isn't a euphemism for it sucks. It held in place the entire time I shot it. I roughed it up a little bit, probably put around 500 rounds through it, and it, it held in place. So maybe my concern is misplaced. So I've got this red marker that I can see in this window. It's like a safety, like telling you that it's locked in. So it's like, cool, it's locked in. Not quite, it actually isn't locked in. So you have to wait until, hold on, wait for it, boom, till that button pops out. Once it's in there, it is pretty sturdy. I don't think you have much to worry about, but bear in mind that this locking component is also entirely composed of plastic. Similarly, as far as I can tell, the folding brace here, entirely plastic. And then this little locking latch, not very robust. I'm gonna lay some B-roll over this real quick where you can see like my SB tactical brace that I use on my H&K SP5. That's got a plastic lockup, but it's got an extremely robust locking tab. And I'm not terribly worried about that going anywhere. This button and locking tab don't necessarily inspire confidence, if you know what I'm saying. So those are the things that I liked and the things that I didn't like about the MCK. I will say this, this thing was fun as hell. To be able to take like your Glock or your 320 or your M&P, be able to pop it in this chassis and get this kind of performance with like no recoil out of it, mountain optic. I had a blast shooting this thing at the range. Really fun, definitely makes your sidearm much more effective. So they've accomplished that from a performance standpoint. My chief complaints that haven't been addressed in the 2.0, my chief concerns all have to do with durability. So for all I know, if CAA swoops in and they say, hey look, we put 100,000 rounds through one of these chassis and we haven't had a component breakage. And maybe I'm asking too much for something that costs somewhere between like 150 and 
maybe I'm asking too much, but I think principally this could be a viable self-defense tool. This could be something that actually gets used in harm's way and not just on the range, in my humble opinion. I mean, what the hell do I know about that? But the performance was there, the reliability is there, the ergonomics and the features are there in spades. They did a great job with that. There are just little things like the dinky, pathetic flashlight. You know, it's like, in conclusion, the CAA MCK, is this a fun range toy? Absolutely. You can go to the range and dick around with this thing all day. I promise you, you're going to have a fun time, especially if you're shooting on steel like I was. Is it a viable self-defense tool? Mm, with some of the changes that they made in the 2.0, my response would be possibly, possibly. I'd want to see a little bit more durability. I'd want to see some harder testing on it. If somebody told me that this was durable, that this thing would last, you know, like 30, 40, 50,000 rounds. Is anybody going to run that through this? Absolutely not. Does it rise to the level of operator? Of course, CAA is going to say that it does. And CAA, the guys that work there, they are a bunch of actual, real life, honest to goodness, vets, operators. But they're also selling this to you guys out there in YouTube land. But all I'm saying is if this is something where it's like, okay, I'm going to keep my Glock 17 under my bed at night, locked into my MCK chassis, because all I can afford is like one handgun or whatever, and I want something, I want a force multiplier to make me more effective. If I'm going to do something like that, where like actually trust this thing, trust my life to it, I'm going to want to know that it's durable, so I'd want to see some more torture testing or some reliability testing out of it. Wait, what's that? I just got $3,000 from CAA in my PayPal. Hey everyone, James Rees with TFB TV, and you're about to see my review of the CAA MCK, which is possibly the best gun I've ever shot in my entire life. And I would dare say, maybe the gun you didn't even know you needed. Was that good? Is the money still there?